first thing we need for the outside. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We do right. this. We thank him for that, the beautiful rain that's falling. Um, if you are visiting with us, we're, we're so glad you're here. And um, we have a connection card. There should be somewhere in here. If not, you can use this one. Um, we'd like to keep in touch with you. And if there's a place there for prayer concerns also. Some announcements for this morning. Yesterday we had a white crew here. We didn't have any kids, but us adults that were there had a great time with our shipping. And we just want to thank um, Rick Claybon for all that he did. Uh, you know, kids just don't ride bikes anymore, unfortunately. And it was sad, but it's okay. We'll figure it out, won't we, Rick? <laughs> all right. Uh, normally this is the day we would go to the nursing home to sing to the residents there. We will not be able to go due to COVID. Uh, Women's Christian Fellowship that was scheduled for Tuesday afternoon has been canceled. A lot of the ladies are out of town or uh, have appointments, so we're just going to put that off till next month. <clears throat> Songbooks. Some of you may have seen these. It, all, everything will be on the PowerPoint today, but if you have difficulty reading that, there are songbooks. Tammy, our secretary, and Craig have worked on this for months. And this is our songbook that we will be using outside at Crossroads. So we just want to thank them for all their hard work. It was a lot of work. Uh, and if you are using one, please return those at the end of the service. There's a table there, or just put them in the vestibule on the table. That would be great. Um, many of us ladies are looking at going to a conference. It's called Extraordinary Women Conference. And it's in Lynchburg, Virginia on October 7th and 8th. And though that may seem a long way away, we still have to uh, register and book a hotel. And I looked yesterday, and many of the hotels are already filling up. So uh, the some of the speakers will be Shannon Breen from Fox News, comedian Shonda Pierce, and Phil Wickham will do a concert. And the worship leader will be Michael O'Brien, who used to sing a new, uh, new song. The group new song. So if you are interested in going, please see me as soon as possible or call me and I will put your name down and I'm getting all the information together and should have it here next Sunday. So if you would like to attend that, please let me know. Okay? Anyone else have any announcements? No? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you so much for this beautiful, beautiful day and the rain that you have sent to water the plants and the flowers and the fields. You send that rain, Father, so that we will have the beauty of your nature and have food on our table. And we just thank you so much, Father, for your love, your unfailing, unending love for each one of us. Now we come to you, Father, Letting all the cares and the worries of the world just stay outside the door and just come and bow down before you and lift your name up and worship you. For you alone are worthy of our praise. We thank you again, Father, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's all stand and sing, Who Shall I Fear? It's on page, page 45 in the songbook.
Sunday school we were talking about, we were talking about caring for our souls. And that's one way we can care for our soul, is to come to worship and read our Bibles and pray and have a positive attitude. And let God nurture us every day. There are lots of folks this uh, week um, traveling. There's a whole group going to Bermuda on a cruise. So we'll Today, so let's keep them in, in our prayers this week. Any other prayer concerns that you want to lift up to the Lord today? Yes, Jim. Still continue to pray for Bill Brown. Bill Brown? Yes, and also Rachel Thompson, my son's girlfriend, is doing well from her surgery. Amen. Rachel Thompson, recovering well from surgery. <coughs> Yesterday, I had a really bad spell of, I don't know, equilibrium or something, but I was almost fell two or three times. So, oh, goodness, sounds like vertigo. I, I, yeah. Okay, so we'll lift up Warren. That's no fun. state and local. We just ask you that you would 
to fill them and that they will look to you for wisdom and guidance to make the right decisions for everyone. Now, Father, help us to say the prayer that you taught us to pray through your Son, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Amen. This morning I'd like to talk on the topic after Ararat. After Ararat or somewhere over the rainbow. Let's bow our heads once again in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for your Holy Spirit in our midst. Lord, we are nothing without you. And once again, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come to, to sp bring spirit and fire to your word, that we can receive the message that you would have us today, that we can bring that message to each and every one that we meet. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is the evening of May 11th, 1996. The place is the south summit of Mount Everest. An experienced mountain climber by the name of Ron Hall from New Zealand is talking to his wife who is expecting a child back in New Zealand through a radio telephone link that they have made. They've been talking all day. They no doubt talked about what happened yesterday, a very interesting time. For you see, Ron Hall and his team made it to the top of Mount Everest. He was literally on top of the world and the thrill that that could bring. But you see, Ron Hall stayed too long on Mount Everest. And the return trip would be most perilous indeed. The price of, of conquering the mountain would be high indeed this time. The thrill of being on top of the world would morph into despair. For you see, an unexpected snowstorm hit with its violent winds and its horizontal sleet and snow. Yes, it would be a high price. The sudden so, so, a snowstorm caught many off guard, and as a result, several died, including Scott Fisher, an American uh, expedition leader on Mount Everest. But somehow Ron Hall managed to survive the day. And the next morning, May 11th, he was able to make contact with his wife back in New Zealand. Yes, it is the evening of May 11th, 1996. Those of his followers and his expedition that were back at base camp, base camp no doubt, were very sorrowful as they listened to the words of Ron Hall talking to his expectant wife. He had been in good spirits all day, but now it's the evening. His oxygen is running low. And his friends back at base camp hear him click off the radio. The mountain that he conquered had now conquered him and would be his eternal resting place. You know, they tell us that Many of those who die on Mount Everest die after they've accomplished in reaching the top of the mountain, literally on top of the world. But because they take the downhill for granted and they're tired and they stay too long on the mountaintop, they put themselves in peril. There's a place on the north end of Mount Everest called Valley of the Rainbow. And it's a beautiful sight because, as you can see, they, they have these, uh, you might call them clotheslines, that hang beautiful coats of various colors. But these are the coats of those who tried to make it to the top, but did not make it. The more beautiful the scene, the more tragic is the story. And so we ask ourselves, what causes people to, to risk their lives to do such a challenging effort? What causes them? to try to reach the top of the mountain. Well, for one thing, mountains are beautiful. They're exciting. We speak of them, you know, prophetically or, or symbolically. You know, I'm on the top of the world. We're, we're excited. We're thrilled. The, this past week, my wife and I, we went to West Virginia. Now that we were passing through the part of, of uh, Virginia, the western part of West Virginia, I just marveled. I, I even told her, I said, look at these mountains. They're very, very beautiful. Something we don't really see here on the eastern shore, do we? But there's something about the mountains that are exciting, that is thrilling. I know when we lived in Italy, my, my father was uh, a missionary to Italy for the Churches of God, and my high school years were spent in beautiful Naples, Italy. And what you see here is the beautiful Bay of Naples. And uh, in fact, it's so beautiful, there's a saying, see Naples and die. Uh, it is so beautiful that you will see everything. But part of that uh, beautiful scene, of course, is Mount Vesuvius in the background. 
This, of course, is the volcano that buried Pompeii in 79 AD. And one day, we, my, my family, mom and dad, and, my, and myself, and, and another person was with us, we uh, took a, a tour, uh, or you know, we climbed Mount Vesuvius, and it took effort, but it was exciting to, to, to reach the very top and look down to the crater of this great uh, volcano. It was exciting, it was thrilling. I remember several years after that, we took a drama, a Christian drama team to Alaska, and, and one of the families that we were staying with, one of the people from the church we were with, came over and said, would you like to go on the hike? Well, yeah, yeah, we, we'd love to do that. Little did we realize he was going to have us climb Flat Top Mountain. Now, uh, now this was nothing like climbing Mount Everest, but it, it took, <laughs> evidently it's, it's a tourist attraction for amateur climbers to climb Flat Top Mountain. And it took effort. But I can remember reaching the top of Flat Top Mountain, how exciting it was. In fact, one of my pictures of my, that I have on my Facebook for years was that picture of me on Flat Top Mountain. We conquered the mountain. The mountaintops are very exciting. Well, this morning we're going to talk about someone who, uh, who also conquered the mountain. Now, he conquered the mountain really through God's help. We know the story of Noah, how God told him that there's going to be a flood. There's going to be a worldwide flood. It's going to destroy all life. Now, we, we know that Noah was a man of faith. In fact, the Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But we don't really realize how much faith it would take for, for Noah. And there's a reason that he found grace in the eyes. Because we believe it's not itself, that probably there was never rain, even rain before this. We believe that the earth was watered by the morning dew. So for him, for God to tell him there's going to be rain, not only just rain from above, but from below, and it's going to flood the whole earth. That would take a lot of faith, but even more faith, Noah, you've got to build an ark. Not only for you and your family, but all the animals. It took a great amount of faith for Noah to do this, to build an, to build an ark. Now, uh, if, you've, if you've never been to Williamstown, Kentucky, you need to go there because there is a replica of the side, how big this ark is. This is a picture of it right here, and even then it doesn't really do, do its justice. It is 400, if you, would, if you translate the cubits into feet, it's approximately 440 feet long, 72 feet wide, and about 42 feet high. And you can see, I don't know if you can tell in that picture, but there's a car back there, and if you were to look at a, a, a person standing there, uh, next to it, from that distance, it would look like a little ant. This thing is absolutely huge. Uh, you must have been there. Yes. Yeah, and and it, by the way, a little commercial. If you go there, go a few more miles north and see the Creation Museum as well. Uh, an exciting time. Great, uh, uh, a great uh, vacation for, for all of us. And now back to our scheduling program. The commercials are over. Um, but but it, it's, it's amazing. It's, it, they say that it took... 40 years for Noah and his sons to build the ark. This wasn't a little, uh, a little uh, sailboat. This was amazing. You see, yes, Noah had faith. Noah had trust in the Lord. But he also had hard work involved in it. You know, sometimes we say, well, I have faith in God. I'm going to trust God. And then we want to sit back and do nothing. God calls us to trust Him, to have faith in Him, and then to work for Him. And in Noah's case, it required a great great sacrifice. But he was willing. He was a man who found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And as the saying goes, he landed high and dry. I feel like singing that uh, Tennessee Army Corps, you know, no found grace. Don't tempt me. I, I might do it. But uh, but, uh, um, but anyway, you know, uh, the story of Noah is, is, is well loved by everyone. Uh, especially children. Uh, my granddaughter, you know I'd have to talk about Jackie, but you, you, knew, you knew that was coming. Uh, she, loves, she loves the story of Noah. And one of the most beautiful scenes of Noah is this one here. This is the one that we all like to look at. Because it depicts the ark right there on the top of Mount Ararat. He had conquered the mountain. And it has the animals descending from the ark. We have Noah offering uh, to God. And we have the beautiful rainbow in the sky. You know, this, the uh, Judy Garland song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, from Wizard of, the, uh, Wizard of Oz. The beautiful rainbow, you know. Those colors used to represent something beautiful. Now it represents 
Uh, this month, pride, I don't know if you realize, but pride is one of the seven deadly sins. But anyway, I, I won't go there. But uh, the, the, the rainbow is a beautiful, beautiful scene. It's, it's a, it represents joy and happiness, and, and, and we're all, you know, kumbaya moment. But can you imagine if that was the end of the story? We, this is it now. The Noah's Ark's done. That's, that's the end of it. We don't realize that Noah had a lot of hard work to do after Ararat. What comes after conquering the mountain? What comes after Ararat? What is this place called over the rainbow? The place is a place of a lot of hard work. Yes, the rainbow represents beauty and peace, but it also represented now it was time to work. Because if there had been no more work after that, there would have been no more civilization. This talks about the time now that Noah has to go back and be fruitful and multiply and build and build probably even more than what he built the ark to reestablish the civilization. This is the important part. So many times, you know, we, we, we like to, to sit and, and, and just watch the beautiful scene. And so many people, you know, they want the blessings of God. We all want the blessings of God, you know. You know, we say, oh, Lord, uh, bless me. I, I want your blessing. I feel so good. I want to be blessed by you. The Lord's probably thinking, well, I blessed you last night. Oh, yes, yeah, Lord, I know. But I want to be blessed. I want to continue to be blessed. I want to be, blessed. I want to be presented as pure gold in your sight. The Lord says, you want to be presented as pure gold in my, my sight? Oh, yes, Lord, bless me. I want to be presented as pure gold in your sight. Do you really want to be presented as pure gold in my sight? Yes, Lord. Okay, then get in the fire. You see, when gold is mined, it's not pure gold until it's been placed in the fire. And all the impurities have been burned out from it. You see, many people don't realize, because, but Noah lived 350 years after the flood. We don't talk about his life after the flood. But I'm sure it was filled with heartache and, and, and troublesome times. As I said, he had to build a nation. He had to build new homes for him and, and his sons and, 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 and you know, reestablish civilization that had been destroyed. His work wasn't over. In fact, I believe his hardest work was after the flood. You know, God has blessed the churches so much. I look at Rocket Walking. He has blessed you. you. You developed an independent church. You built that beautiful um, uh, pavilion outside. I know we couldn't get to use it today, but, but then you wouldn't have seen the picture of the ark, so, so maybe it all worked out okay. But, uh, but you built that beautiful uh, pavilion, and you're excited about new leadership that's coming in, and, and we can be on a high mountain for a while. But that's not the entire mission of the church. Yes, it's important. We're on the mountaintop on Sundays. And why, that's why, folks, it's so important for you to come. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. We need each other. When we come here in this sanctuary or outside in the pavilion, whatever we need is a body of Christ. We're on the mountaintop, and it's good for us to be on the mountaintop because we get blessed, we get energized. But that's not the final story of our mission for Christ. No one probably would have blamed Noah if he had just stayed there. Listen, listen, I put up, can you imagine... Just think about what Noah had to put, put up with. He was ridiculed. He was lambasted because of the idea that he was going to follow God. He was, if you talk about the, the hateful world we're in today, there wasn't one other person other than him and his family that loved God. They criticized him. He was preparing for a catastrophe that wasn't his own doing. He was preparing for a catastrophe that uh, was filled with him being mocked and laughed at. Really building the safety for all the people, but they rejected him. Who would have blamed him if he said, look, I've worked 40 years on the ark. I love the rainbow. I love the mountain. I'm just going to stay here. That would have been the end. But he worked hard. After Ararat, there was much work to be done. Summer over the rainbow, a place of hard work, but with the strength of the Lord guiding us and being with us. Grace Hopper it was a rear admiral in the Navy. But she was also the, a pioneer in the computer field. She actually worked on one of the first uh, computers. 
the mark that was one of the earliest computers. She also developed one of the first high-level languages in computer science. You know, the, the computer only speaks ones and zeros. It's a foreign language. But she developed, uh, helped develop COBOL, which is one of the first high-level languages that allowed programmers to speak more in human terms to get the computer what they wanted to do. And now all you have to do is say, hey, Alexa. Yeah, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty easy. I made a mistake though, last night. I said, hey, Siri. And she wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> I'll tell you, I've got too many women in my life. I've got Siri and Alexa, and I, I guess Alexa's mad, and maybe they call her Siri. I don't know. But, but she worked on the very, you know, one of the first languages, the high level languages, to, to develop in the computer science field. But she has a saying, being a real admiral, a loyal Navy person. She says, a ship in port is safe. But that's not what ships were built for. Go out to sea and do new things. Yes, the ship in port is safe. Yes, let's face it, right now we are all safe from that outside world that is being filled with such sin and, and hatred. We're safe right now because we are, we're, we're hearing the God's word and we're seeing other people like-minded. This is, this is great for us to get energized. But church, this is not the only mission that we have. We are to set sea and do new things. Amen. Which brings me to our verse that we read earlier this morning. Psalm 84, 5, 6 uh, uh, says this. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. Talking about the Lord. Blessed are those whose strength in the, is in the Lord. But notice what it says. Who have set their heart on pilgrimage. Yes, we have the strength of the Lord. We get in here. We get on the mountaintops, our spiritual. We get the strength of the Lord. But what's the next step? Blessed are they whose heart is set on pilgrimage. A couple weeks ago, we talked about into the wild. Forever searching. We're on a journey. Blessed are those who have set their heart on pilgrimage. And where is that pilgrimage? Verse 6 says... As you pass through the valley of wicked, you make it a place of springs. That is our mission, church. Yes, we're on the mountaintop. We get the strength. We get the vigor. We get the blessings of the Lord. But now we have to go down to a world that is crying desperately for Jesus Christ. A world that is seemingly spinning out of control. You can't pick up the news. You can't listen to one piece of news from day to day where it doesn't get worse. When you think it can't get worse, they invent new ways of making it worse. It's a valley of weeping. If you have the King James, it's valley of Baca, but that word Baca simply means the valley of weeping. And what are we to do while we're down there? We're to make it a place of springs. What kind of springs? A well of living water springing up into everlasting life that Jesus said to the woman at Samaria who was so desperate, who lived a life of pain and anger and hurt. But Jesus said, I'm going to give you living water and that living water will be in you. A well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. Yes, we're conquered the mountaintop, but now we're to go down to the valley of weeping. We can't stay too long on the mountaintop. That was the mistake that Scott Fisher and Ron Hall made. They stayed too long on the mountaintops. And it was their doom. And let me tell you, church, that can be the doom of the church if we don't follow the mission of God, the mission of Jesus Christ, to present the gospel to Him. Amen. Martin Luther King, in his last speech, just before he was assassinated, and you're familiar with it, said, I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Moses went to the mountaintop and he saw the promised land. <coughs> but to get to the promised land, they had to get off the mountain. They had to cross Chile Jordan River. They had to fight the battles. They had to go through. We can't stay on the mountaintop. No. Folks, that is our vision. The world is changing, yes. But our mission has not. Rocket walking, we need to see the blessings of God to get energized for Him. But it means that we need to go out. We need to live a life pleasing to Christ, to invite others to, to, to the church, to be willing to establish programs that will bring young people and children to the church for the next generation. We can't just sit here and be blessed and blessed and blessed. We have a mission. 
That is our mission. Yes, blessed are those whose strength is in the Lord, but who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. That is our mission. That is our goal. That is our vision. And that should be our very soul. In two weeks, this will be my last sermon here in two weeks. I'm planning, unless the Lord changes my mind, I already gave it to Tammy, so I don't know. But I'm planning on, on preaching, burn, baby, burn, or super excited. And I, I didn't know you had this, but I was looking at it today. Now, hopefully it will be outside, uh, so we won't see this banner. But I'll tell you, these banners are going to be exactly that sermon. The Spirit is a flame of hope burning in us. It's got to be our mission. It's got to be our goal. It's got to be a vision. But it's got to be our very soul. The power of Christ has to live within us. Yes, it's not going to be pleasant. I'm sure um, Noah found many times after the flood where he got discouraged. I'm sure there was many problems he had. But he kept going. Yes, the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the Ephesians 6.12. We know that. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know, it's easy to blame you know, people and everything, but I can tell you, the evil of this world doesn't come from men alone. It comes from the very pits of hell. The devil is, uh, is bent on destroying this nation, on destroying this generation. But I want you to know, the words from 1 John 4.4 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and you have overcome. Why? For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So yes, we've been to the mountaintop. We've seen the victory. We need to go to the mountaintop of faith. But then we need to go down to the valleys. We need to go to the highways and the byways and tell them of the love of Jesus Christ. This is our mission. This is our vision. This is our goal. This is our very soul. It is who we are. And as we read in the passage of the psalm, yes, they that sow in tears, the church that goes down to the valley of weeping, that there might be tears, but if you sow in tears, what does it say? You shall weep in joy. And even that next, that other verse of Psalms we read says, uh, uh, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes no more. Did you notice joy is the reward in both of those? They that sow in tears will reap in joy. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It may be tough. And I'll tell you, you can get discouraged. Believe me, I've been there. I know what it feels like. All of us have. We all have our own... Um, all experiences of hurt and, 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 and traumas that we have to go through. Yes, it's a valley of weeping, but joy comes in the morning Amen. if we see our, see our Lord and keep our eyes on the mission. After Ararat, faith, trust, hard work. Somewhere over the rainbow is a mission field that we need to get to. And I can tell you, if we have that on our eyes, this church will be filled, every pew. You'll have to go to several services, several services to meet because you, this church, it has the answer. Just like we, we said, you know, Jesus, we need Jesus. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. Amen. After Eric, somewhere over the rainbow, we have the blessings of God. Let us pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your love and mercy to us. Lord, it, 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 as we look at the world, we just can't help but cry out. Lord, it, it, that's almost impossible to, at times to not get discouraged because there seems to be so much evil. But you told us. First of all, to assemble ourselves, to be blessed. But we can't stay long on the mountain, Lord. We need to have that mission to go out, to tell others, to bring others to the church, to live a life, to see the future for our church. You will be willing and are able to give us that power within us, the Holy Spirit, that we can meet the goal that you have set for us, the mission of bringing the world and the lost to your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us that strength. Help us to keep moving, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No doubt in my mind that God sent you here to give us that message. Now let's stand and sing, Goodness of God.